Okay, so I've run into a new problem with a combination of the old foot brake, the new motor, and this uh, new kickstand assembly. So I just showed how I got this to fit with just enough clearance. And I thought everything was going to be fine because again, I like this kickstand and how it keeps the bike uh, perfectly centered. The problem that I just ran into though as I'm trying to install the brake lever is that uh, the way that this foot peg comes straight the highest that this lever can go has this um, lever canted pretty much as forward as it's going to go. What I need is for this to be a little higher so this can start up here so that that can be there, so that the travel can be long enough to pull the uh, brake rod for the rear. But this comes straight out. I was looking at the original one and it looks like at the point of the pivot here it comes quite a bit up. It looks like probably just enough so that I have the clearance that I need. So I'm going to go ahead and try to put this one back on. Since I bought those spaces, I'm going to see if it's enough to get this to sit on properly. If it does, this is also going to have to go to the powder coater because with everything else looking brand new, I can't put this on as rusted as it is. I've got the stock foot peg assembly to fit and I should have, should have tried this out to start off with, but um, I thought the other solution was going to be easier and it of course just made the, the project a little more difficult. But what I found is that with, uh, let's see, these are two 3 and 16 inch spacers. So that's 6 16 3 8 So a 3 8 spacer in the back. The 3D printer comes in handy because I need a, I have a washer that's really thin for the key ignition, but I need something that's about three and a half a millimeter stick to properly fit in the frame. So I use Tinkercad to draw that plastic washer. I use Ultimaker Cura to slice that washer. And then I'm going to take it over to the printer to print it out. Since it was so small, it only took uh... 11 minutes and the washer is ready. So the fitment is pretty good, but it's not perfect because it tapers out a little more on the end here. Uh, so I need to, I don't know, about one extra, maybe half a mil of diameter will be perfect. So I'm gonna make that adjustment in Tinkercad, uh, slice it and then get it back to the printer and hopefully have the spacer that I need to get the ignition installed. Here's the second print with the size adjustment and I'm also using a carbon fiber uh, infused PLAs and also with a much higher fill rate so that this should actually be physically pretty strong. It shouldn't have any actual real tensions on it but uh, for a part that's going to be on inside the bike for you know probably the rest of its life might as well make it as strong as I can. Here's the final product in the carbon fiber infused PLA. Uh, the fitment diameter wise is perfect um, and again it was built to be a little bit stronger. Here's the key cylinder fit after we installed the PLA carbon fiber washer. Um, you can see now that, hopefully that's in focus, you can see how almost perfectly flush the outer lock ring is with the cylinder itself. There was about three threads you could see popping beyond the, the nut itself. Uh, but now it's perfectly flush and uh, that was the last, that was one of the last things that I needed to get figured out before I could start installing the wiring harness. I also got the reproduction stickers back on. Uh, the company that I got these from is called uh, Speed and Sport Vintage. Their website is speedandsportreproduction.com, uh, but I doubt you're gonna find a more realistic reproduction sticker. There's some, I was actually looking at some pictures. The original one actually has this back part filled with yellow, which honestly I prefer to be able to see the, the red behind it, particularly now with the powder coating and how sharp the paint looks. I spent a lot of time making sure that I got those aligned as best as I could and I really like the way that it looks. Uh, got the some of the more I got some more of the handlebar controls set up so I got the grip on here this was a uh, pretty inexpensive I think only about ten dollar uh, eBay find that uh, has the horn button the turn signals and high and low beam and then this uh, clutch lever it doesn't perfectly match the brake lever but it's pretty close um, since this life and motor has the 
one down, three up, clutch transmission, which I prefer over the semi-automatic transmission that the uh, original CT70 engine came with. I'm going to change the sprocket drive gear. The stock one that comes with the life in is a 14, and I'm going to replace it with a 16-tooth sprocket to have a better ratio uh, to my rear 35-tooth um, rear drive gear. I had originally purchased another sprocket gear that uh, was designed for the life in motor, but apparently has a different diameter here. Uh, so hopefully this is the right one. I'll get this put on and then I'll get the chain put on and figure out how this new tensioner system works. I think it's just a matter of spreading these nuts out and it'll push it this way uh, to tighten, but uh, we'll get that figured out here in a minute. So there were just three bolts holding the engine housing cover on and then there's two 10 millimeter bolts. Um, I'm gonna have to put the bike in gear though. I need to put a gear and I need to add a gear lever so that I can because currently it's spinning. Okay, I popped it into first, uh, pulled out the two 10 millimeter bolts. It has this retaining clip that's timed before it can come off. And then the original gear. And hopefully this fits. Oh man, it doesn't. Okay, now I have the right size sprocket gear. Um, I didn't realize how small of a difference there was between the splines, but the size that you need for the Lifen 125 motor, or at least the one that I have, is uh, 20 millimeters, and that's measured uh, between these two longest points of the spline. You see here it's reading, can't tell if you can see, it's showing 19.77. I believe the uh, one that I mistakenly purchased was 17 millimeters, and that was obviously too small. Sorry for the loud fan noise, I have uh, cool air blowing in from the house. Uh, one thing that I wanted to point out as I worked through the wiring harness is the importance of having a 3.5mm uh, bullet connector kit and the correct crimping tool to uh, crimp them onto the wires. I, I have this universal 12 volt harness that I've installed in the bike and it, for the most part is pretty good and most of the connections match up but not everything's perfect. Uh, for instance, the kill switch on my throttle uh, went into a clip that didn't match the uh, leads on the throttle kill so I just added the bullet connectors to both sides so that it would fit easily. And here on the engine harness uh, the lead coming out from the harness is male and the lead coming from the motor is male uh, both of these being the ground leads so that's obviously not going to work so I'm Gonna go ahead and just cut off the male lead here, replace it with a female lead, and have it mated up. So I'm gonna take this male lead, take the plastic piece off. Cut off the male lead. Strip about half a centimeter off of casing. Put on the rubber cover. Set this in and pinch the outside first so that it'll hold. And then use the crimping tool. for a nice clean crimp and then slot that over and now it meets up perfectly with the existing ground lead that I had. So a couple of thoughts about this rear swing arm. It didn't come with directions so I ran into a couple of issues and wanted to uh, identify them here. One is there were two different sized bolts or the heads of the bolts were different um, and I didn't realize what the difference was but the bolt that goes on the drive side is very thin. It's um, only about maybe three, four millimeters thick. Um, and the reason is so that it doesn't get caught up on the chain. The full size one can go on the non-drive brake side. Uh, so that's the differences between those two. And then the kit for the extended swing arm comes with this extended 
um, bracket for holding the rear hub. The it comes with a bolt. It's a twenty. It's a M10 by 1.25, and it's 25 millimeters long. I had a lot of trouble getting it to thread into the hole, though. Uh, I went to the store and made sure that it wasn't actually a, a M10 by 1.0 or by 1.5. It was 1.25, but I don't know if the threads just weren't cut cleanly or what it was, but I had to really crank this down to, to get it in. I put some cutting oil on the threads as I went in. I don't think any of the threads actually cut. I'm not too sure why it was so tight. Uh, and I was able to snug it down just about as far as I needed to there for the spring to go over the, the collar. But it was uh, pretty difficult to do. So just heads up that it is the right bolt um, and it could just be mine had bad threads, but apparently you just need to, to really muscle it in. So for the first time in this bike's history, as long as I've owned it, uh, this bike now has a chain. I bought a 106 link chain for this two inch extended swing arm and I ended up removing six links, so I used exactly 100 links uh, for this setup. And it's pretty much right in the middle where I can then make adjustments uh, for tightness. So uh, if you happen to be doing the same setup, 100 links is the exact length. Uh, what I ended up doing was buying this uh, chain removal tool from Amazon. It was only about $15. It was a pretty simple setup. It says 25 to 60. I don't, I don't know too much about uh, chain sizes, but it worked fine for this. 420 size chain uh, and the way that it works is uh, when you squeeze the handle it opens it up you grab it at one of these links and then you can see that as you turn uh, this top handle the pin moves down if I can do it with two hands it's not focusing well but you can see then how the pin has contact with the tool and you keep pressing it and the pin pushes all the way through so it was actually pretty easy to remove it. I had a similar tool for bicycles uh, that wasn't big enough, but it's the same concept um, and it worked pretty smoothly. I actually first took five pins out, five links out, and uh, I needed a little more. So I took, you have to take two links out at a time actually, uh, because of the way that the uh, connection tool works. It has two pins coming across, so it needs to be open on both sides. Uh, the pin connection here just has this uh, clip that two pieces come through and this slides through and locks it, a pretty simple setup. Uh, but the chain is on. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this and make sure everything's straight. Then I can get the cap on the motor back on and I'll put the chain guard on and I'm hoping then I can try taking it for its first test ride. There's still all kinds of electronics that need to be connected, but the way that the motor's set up, it shouldn't need the battery. I should be able to start it up and um, hopefully cruise it around, so we'll see how that goes. Now that the chain's on, you can also see why this bolt is as thin as it is, because with the chain right here, there's a lot of uh, room for it to hit the full-size bolt. You can see the full-size bolt on this side, and it sticks out uh, quite a bit, so um, it's essential when you're putting this on that you use the thin side bolt on the drivetrain side.